Hey, so what's going on guys? Me here with Drunk Reviews and welcome back to another video. So it has been a pretty long time since I actually unboxed an Android device. I think the last Android device I did was the TCL Plex, if I'm not mistaken. Probably that was the last Android device I did. I was like using iOS devices ever since. Anyway, a mysterious package showed up and it happened to be the Oppo A95. So yes, this is definitely not the latest uh, flagship uh, like the S22 series. But uh, this was launched late in 2021, I believe, around November. And I think this is a pretty good value for money budget device. Of course, it's not the 5G version. Uh, I'm happy that I didn't get the 5G version because the 5G version is running on MediaTek. And I'm not a big fan of MediaTek because of the experiences I had with MediaTek. So this is actually the 4G version that comes with the Snapdragon 662 based on the 11 nanometer process compared to, of course to the MediaTek version the Dimensity 800U which has 5G and it's based on a 7 nanometer process so yes this is a slightly older chipset so yes this is a slightly older chipset definitely but yeah I do prefer Snapdragon chips for Android phones over any other chip all right so let's uh quickly get this unboxed because I think many of you have already seen unboxings of this device on YouTube or on the internet okay so we have a very nice blue box so you can see right here we have 8 GB RAM and 128 GB storage you can see Oppo A95 okay let's take a look at the spec so we do have 33 watt flash charge right here you can see 8 GB 128 GB and RAM expansion which is really good for a budget device I mean Having RAM expansion means that you can open more apps because you can allocate the storage on your device as RAM. So right here you can see we do have an AMOLED display which is perfect because on budget devices usually you expect LCD display but we do have an AMOLED display. I believe this is at 60 hertz. This is not like 90 or 120 hertz. So right here we can see that we have a 5000 milliamp hour battery. All right guys, so let's slide out the sleeve very simple all right inside you get a white box which is very reminiscent of the past oppo devices like the r5 the r series which i use many many years back so very nice throwback okay let's slide off the lid all right so on the top we get another box which you can already guess the contents anyways let's just open up and check so we do have a sim ejector tool and we have the famous or i should say the infamous books which if you're interested in literature you can definitely read it and we do have a jelly case a very nice case to get you started off i bet many people will just leave this case on and probably not even get another case i've seen many uh, using this until it turns yellow and dirty so on the bottom we get the device itself and it shows you where are the pots so we do have a earpiece on the top we have buttons on the right and the left side and we do have the specs as well so you can see right here similar to the back of the box so very nice uh, overall the feel in the hand feels good for a budget device so let's see what comes in the box so we get a USB-C to USB-A cable this unsurprisingly doesn't have super vo which means that it is considered as uh, Oppo's slow charging but if you compare that to Apple standards yeah this is pretty quick okay we do have the 33 watt so-called fast charger in the box and that's about it we don't get any headphones so pretty basic packaging but I mean this is a budget phone you don't expect the bells and whistles of the flagship devices all right so let's uh get this one unwrapped Oh no, I actually powder on the device as well. So yeah, might as well just let it power up. So you can see right here, this is a pretty massive device. If you compare it to my iPhone 12 Pro, this is a gigantic device. I believe it is 6.4 inches or 6.5 inches, closer to 6.5 inches. But overall, the feel in the hand is really good. This is a plastic bag, I'm pretty sure. So on the front, we do have this punch hole camera. I believe it's 16 megapixels. 
so it is not the best of the best but uh Oppo's uh, processing the software algorithm for the camera is pretty good because I've actually used many Oppo devices and I believe uh, that this camera is going to perform well if you compare mid-tier devices especially with like Samsung and many others okay on the back we got a couple of average cameras I mean mid-tier camera setup so we do have a 48 megapixel lens for the primary camera we do have another two separate two megapixel one for macro i believe and another one i'm not sure for depth yeah the usual crappy camera setup which we get with uh, budget devices i mean you don't expect like flagship level camera but with the algorithm i believe these cameras will definitely impress so let's take a closer look at the camera module you can see right here ai 48 megapixel triple camera actually it's more like a single camera because the other two cameras are basically useless okay so we do have very nice and tactile buttons i should say so we do have a screen protector right here a pre-applied screen protector which would probably last like a week and let me see we do have a couple of buttons i'm not sure whether the camera is picking this up so we do have a volume up and down rocker on the left hand side power button on the right side let's take a look at the bottom we do have usb-c right here and of course the long loss 3.5mm audio jack we do have a single speaker on the bottom i believe this is a single speaker setup i'm not really sure but uh, considering 2021 budget devices i guess it's still a single speaker setup so we do have uh, expandable storage right here so let me just poke this sim card tray out All right so i got my sim ejector tool Let's get this thing out so right here we do have I should say a super hybrid sim uh, two sims along with a uh, micro sd card haven't seen this in a while been using apple devices i mean apple devices is just one sim and one e-sim so pretty straightforward but this doesn't have a gasket either so definitely don't get this wet don't get the device wet i mean it will probably just leak through the sim tray into the device so you can see right here nano sims and micro sd which is awesome all right, so let's put that in. We do have a very nice uh, matte texture on the back. You can see it's a bit glittery. You can see a very nice uh, gold Oppo logo. Very nice. I do like the black and gold theme. So overall, I think that this device uh, feels like a budget device. Just like the Galaxy A51, I believe. Galaxy A71. All those feels about more or less the same uh, in the hand. But uh, this has one advantage is that it's matte so you're not going to see any fingerprints as compared to the glossy plastic bags of like the Realme devices and other previous Oppo devices. In my opinion, if I had to pay 1,099 ringgit because I believe this is the retail price for this device, if I had to pay 1,099 ringgit, I think I could like top up another 100 or 200 ringgit and get like the Redmi Note 11 Pro, I believe, which just launched. Uh, that has like better processor, better screen, better cameras, better overall. But many people do not like MIUI, so I'm a bit on the fence with MIUI because of the ads. Even with the global version, yes, ads, I don't know why. Uh, but uh, Oppo's Color OS is more refined, I should say. Alright, so this has been a pretty quick unboxing and my thoughts about a mid-tier device. Of course, my expectations are kept on minimum. So I believe if you're going to be buying this device at the full retail price, get the Redmi Note 11 Pro any day. I wouldn't buy a 2021 meter device for 1000 over ringgit. But I believe many dealers are actually selling this slightly cheaper around the 800 to 900 mark. And of course, this device will be on sale on my carousel. If you are in the Klang Valley or if you're in Malaysia, uh, you can actually pick this up slightly below market price. So that's all for this video. Hope you guys like it. So thanks guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.